Well, hey folks, a quick disclaimer here. You might have noticed, uh, you might notice in this review of All In that you're about to watch that I forgot to mention that Chris Jericho, of all people, showed up and attacked Kenny Omega. And it was a great, great show. It was a great showing, and the fact that he showed up as the, like, the ultimate troll to Vince. I don't know if he was necessarily trolling Vince, but it was just really, really cool how Chris Jericho showed up in Pentagon Jr.'s gear. Apparently he, rent, he raided Pentagon Jr.'s locker or something and attack Kenny Omega, and we'll see him on Jericho Cruise. So that's just a quick disclaimer, so I don't get dust in the comments about forgetting that that happened. So enjoy the all-in review, guys. Really good show, and I encourage you guys to check it out. Well, hey, folks. Relaunching with John Rittlund, my review of All In, the first non-WWE U.S. wrestling event that has drawn over 10,000 people since WCW went under. Cody, the Bucks, everybody put their blood, sweat, and their tears, bet on themselves. They deserve so much damn credit. Big thank you to every single one. Not that they're ever going to watch this show, <clears throat> but honestly, big thanks to them. I am super happy that I spent the 40 bucks on this. More than got my money's worth. Even if I didn't like every single thing on the show, it, you know, there's, that's going to happen on every single wrestling show. But this was picture perfect and really just such a great. It had something for everybody. Where you're a fan of Ring of Honor, PWG, Impact, uh, New Japan, didn't really matter. Whether you're just a fan of just damn good wrestling, less of the fluff, and just more of the in ring stuff. You really could, you really could enjoy the show. Please go out of your way <clears throat> to, you know, spend the money to watch this. It is definitely worth it. It is absolutely worth it. If they release this on DVD, uh, DVD, Blu-ray, I may actually buy it. This was really cool and it would be nice to have that piece of history. These guys deserve so much damn credit, but let me get right into the review. Zero Hour Cody and the Bucks come out and this was damn, this was damn good. Um, just to see their, all their hard work and their see all these people. Crowd was hot through the whole damn show. Bucks were like, hey, you want some pyro? They actually had pyro on this. That was pretty damn cool. Um, they had a whole lot of fun. Road Warrior Animal, of all people, made an appearance. Um, <clears throat> you know, Chicago, and he got a pretty big pop, and that was really, really cool. And, uh, the commentaries that they had were Don Callis, Ian Riccoboni, um, shout out to at Real Brett Vresk for telling me about that. And Excalibur, who I believe does commentary for PWG. I don't recall the account that told me that, but that was really cool. They, they did a damn good job. I will admit that Callus, I, I'm not as too, too fond of Callus compared to some other commentators, but he did play the heel commentary just fine. It was what it was, and it was, it, it, the commentators did do a good job. They didn't do a, they did as good of a job as they could. Honestly, with the grand scale of this and <clears throat> with so many people watching this, I'm amazed that Fight TV held up, that the servers of Fight TV held up. I mean, it was really, it, it was rock solid. I had a few burps in my stream, but honestly, it was really just damn worth it. Anyway, we start off with Frankie, uh, Frankie Kazarian, Scorpio Sky, SCU versus the Briscoes. Not really a fan. I mean, the Briscoes are a damn good team. Jay's a fan of anything that isn't LGBT. And yes, he's a piece of shit for thinking that. But the team is damn good. The team is damn good. And I'm, I'm not going to knock Mark because of that. Um, Briscoes play the heels. And they play the heels really damn well. <clears throat> SCU was over as hell. Um, and they got the victory. And that was really damn good. It was, it was, it was a very fun opening match. Well worked. Briscoes cut the, uh, cut the ring off and did some good tag team wrestling. Scorpio and uh, Kazarian did a damn good job uh, being underneath, you know, being fighting from underneath, being the baby faces. Really well done. And getting the victory really popped the crowd. Shocked me a little bit because I actually thought the Briscoes might get the victory. But still, it was enjoyable. And then we had an o Omega interview where he hyped his uh, match with uh, Pentagon later. And I will say there were some technical flubs and some sound issues. But honestly, for the, the production and for everything that they did, it really did seem, it, it, it was first class and they really did a good job with it. So, over the budget battle royal, um, Dalton Castle was on commentary. Dalton Castle, also a very good worker, former Ring of Honor champion. Um, <clears throat> this was to determine who would face Jay Lethal for a Ring of Honor title match later that night. And you'll forgive me if I screw up some of these names. I know, I know enough of these guys. You got Moose, you know, famous in Ring of Honor and Impact. Uh, Beretta. Chico El Luchador, that you find out later who it actually was. Cole Cabana, Billy Gunn, of all people. Tommy Dreamer, not moving all that well. I know Dreamers be his body to shit, but maybe it's time to hang up those boots. Bully Ray, and Bully playing the perfect heel. I mean, <clears throat> and that's what, that's what he was good at. And 
uh, Jordan. It, it's either Jordan Grace or Jordan Grace, but it's spelled like Jordine. Um, very impressive. I had heard about her. Uh, you tell me in the comments, like if I'm saying her name wrong, I apologize. I had heard of her. I had seen, you know, various little clips of her matches. I'm a new, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm, I'm locked in. I'm a fan. Can't wait to see more of her. She is, she is really good. I see why people talk big, talk big about her. She did well lifting up Brian Cage during this, during this match, showing her serious strength. I mean, honestly, uh, really awesome. But her, Jimmy Jacobs, uh, zombie princess, you know, dressed crazy and everything and doing what he does best, acting, acting funny, but also being very vicious. <clears throat> uh, Rocky Romero, Ethan Page, Brian Cage, as I mentioned, Hurricane Helms, Punishment Martinez, Chucky e. T, Austin Gunn, Billy Gunn's kid. I actually didn't know that. I was like, oh, they're just kayfabing it. No, it's actually his kid. Um, Brandon Cutler, um, Marco. Marco, he was a very, he, he was very, you know, diminutive, poofy haired guy. If I got, if he has a last name and I got it wrong, apologies. <clears throat> Cheeseburger. And if there was anybody else, you know, I, I, missed, I was writing these names down really quick because I didn't want to miss, I didn't want to miss any of this action. It was all over the place. You had people going outside, hitting some dives. Since they weren't thrown over the top rope, they could do that kind of stuff. This was just really fun. Uh, ECW chants were, uh, were loud when weapons were brought in by Dreamer. Shocking, I know. And I'll allow it. That was, that, that was worth it. And Dreamer got a good pop. Plenty of people got a good pop. Billy Gunn did pretty damn well. <clears throat> um, old school meets new school. It was very nice. And of course, uh, you know, Jordan or Jordine Grace, you know, lifting up Ryan Cage and doing pretty damn well. Dreamer at one point accidentally stepped on her hand. Um, when she was outside and she had her hand on the apron, he, I don't think he saw her hand. <laughs> that was, that was kind of a funny moment, but everybody did well here. It, it, it was, it, it, battle royals are hard to pull off, but this was a bit of a clusterfuck, but fun. It was very fun. And, and to start the match, you had Bully Ray put Chico Luchador through a table outside and you don't see him the whole match. And then Bully seems like he's got the victory. And then suddenly Chico shows up. You know, shows up back in the ring, rips off his mask. It's Flip Gordon pushing on the whole, you know, coming off the whole storyline about how Flip wanted to be booked for all in and Cody wouldn't. The Bucks wanted to, but Cody wouldn't. And Flip found a way on the show. He found a way, you know, to mask, mask the, um, <clears throat> mask his problems and get all that. That was a terrible pun. Get onto the show. And it was really, really damn good. Flip managed to get the victory. That was enjoyable. And Flip goes on to face Jay Lethal later in the night. So yeah, this was really enjoyable, and I did I I didn't catch who did I believe somebody did the national anthem I didn't catch who it was, but you had a uh, you start with the main card and it was MJF um, from Defy Wrestling actually I was at a Defy Wrestling show myself and uh, my co-host the Derminator who co-hosts Raw and SmackDown and stuff like that with me in various pay per view reviews. <clears throat> He, um, MJF was actually part, part of the show and really good heel. I think it was a huge potential, really old school, cocky heel and is a damn good worker. And he faced off against Matt, Matt Cross, who's son of Havoc on Lucha Underground. And this was really good. This, this, this was, this was a really good opener. I, I'm not going to say like match of the year, but it was nice because Matt Cross has been wrestling for 20 years and is still more nimble than some people that have wrestled only 10 years. Keeps himself in great shape. Um, MJF focused on the arm, but Matt Cross managed to get, um, managed to hit shooting star press. One, two, three. <clears throat> At least I believe he hit the shooting star press. It wasn't a 450, but Matt Cross, super talented. MJF looked like a star. This is really good stuff. Good opener. And then we go, um, we had Sean Mooney, uh, interviewing Nick Nick Aldis, former Magnus from, uh, from Impact Wrestling. Great to see Sean Mooney back. It was shocking that I didn't tag him in a tweet, and I just tweeted Sean Mooney with exclamation points, like, you know, cool. And he retweeted that, and I'm like, well, that's nice. But no, I, I always like Sean Mooney. I, I I thought Sean Mooney was was damn good, like, in the early days of WWE. I, I, I thought he was, and I would actually like to see him inducted in the Hall of Fame if he hasn't already. But that, that was enjoyable. That was an enjoyable opener. And then we go to Jerry Lynn Bean's uh, special guest referee for Christopher Daniels versus Stephen Amell. Yes, Arrow is about to see the Arrow take down the Fallen Angel. Well, not quite. <clears throat> Third match for Amell. He did very well. You could tell Daniels was leading him. But Amell did look like a star. I will give him credit. He's passionate about wrestling. 
He does the right, he obviously does the right things with his money, but he keeps himself in damn good shape. Um, if I'm right, actually, I think he's taken his wrestling payoffs and donated them and, you know, done a lot of really good charity work. Stephen Amell seems like a really good stand up guy. I was actually at the, uh, raw taping where he was at, um, where he jumped in on Cody. Like, that nah, was at the Everett taping, like, just before, I, I think it was, like, a few weeks before summer or something. That was pretty cool. <clears throat> but Stephen Amell did pretty well here. Uh, Coast to Coast by Stephen Amell. That was really scary. That was a damn scary move, but he hit it. He hit it with precision. And, and that was fun stuff. Table spot, ouch. Amell really crashed and burned there. But then Jerry Lynn was counting and then took off the referee shirt and threw them both back in. It was like, no, no, you're going to fight. And Jerry Lynn has retired from the ring, though you wouldn't have known it with the way he was acting there. But soon after, you had some good exchanges after that. Best moonsault ever for the win. One, two, three. Christopher Daniels gets victory. Uh, both men, you know, have a show of respect at the end. And that was that was enjoyable. Stephen Mell certainly impressed me. Christopher Daniels, 26 years in the wrestling business. That man still can hit picture perfect moonsaults and moves. <clears throat> Like, people, they're, they're even half his age that can't hit shit that good. And that is why Christopher Daniels, one of the many unsung heroes in wrestling. And then we get to, uh, we, we have Mandy Leon and Tennille Dashwood, uh, former Emma, on commentary for the women's match. Tessa Blanchard, Chelsea Green, and her, you know, hot mass crazy bride gimmick. Uh, Madison Rain and Britt Baker, who apparently is actually a dentist. I didn't know that. I didn't know if that was a gimmick she was playing up, but uh, Britt Baker is, of course, uh, dating Adam Cole Bebe. Um, that's the be that's the best I'm going to do because I'm not very good at doing that. Usually I just go, blah, blah, not making fun of him, but I just try to do variations of it. <clears throat> anyway, all four of these women did well. I'm I'm going to be very honest about it. There were some botches in this, and I'm not even blaming any of the women. I think that they were just trying to do a ton of shit, and some of it stuck, and some of it didn't. Now, these women did damn good. Chelsea Green played up her character just fine. Everybody did really well. Though, you did... Uh, you had Tolly Blanchard give Tessa some encouragement in her entrance. That was really cool. Tolly Blanchard, one of, the, one of the greatest of all time, especially one of the greatest of all time tag team wrestlers. Um... Tessa did no sell a, TD, a DDT during that. I didn't really care for that. Tessa did seem hurt on a dive earlier. Thankfully, her knee seems okay. But she no sold a DDT, and I'm just like, really? I mean, I, I, I mean, it, what is not even blaming Tessa? But I'm just like that made it look weak. Um, there was a bitch, bit of a botched ending. Tessa ended up gaining the victory, which is fine. I don't know if the pin was supposed to be broken up or not, but it was what it was. <clears throat> These women worked super hard. Uh, all of them are world-class athletes. There is no doubt about that. It was enjoyable. It, it was enjoyable, even if maybe up to this point it was the weakest match on the show. But that's the thing. There were a lot of there were a lot of matches. There were a few matches that really were potential match of the year candidates, or at least on my favorite matches of the year list. And I'm going to have to rip that ma that list up and do it all again. <clears throat> but I'm not complaining because the efforts by everybody. I have no complaints about anybody. Well, sans a couple. But everybody on this show, you could tell, was treating this like it was their it was their WrestleMania, it was their Wrestle Kingdom, it was their Slam Anniversary, Bound for Glory, whatever it was their um, whatever the Ring of Honor, whatever the biggest Ring of Honor show is when Worlds Collide or something like that. No, that was uh, that's a, that's a Triple A show, whatever the biggest Ring of Honor show is at the end of the year, um, or whatever it is. I mean, it's like their anniversary show. The whole point is everybody treated it and went balls to the wall, you know, you just showed amazing guts and did everything well. Even if not, and not everything stuck. <clears throat> they did so much good shit. And then we get to the NWA title match where Cody with Brandy, Cody coming to the ring. And oh God, you could just, you just see, and I'm going to try not to get emotional about it, but you just see the tears. He's trying to hold back the tears because he was able to achieve his own American dream, much like his dad did. He was able to go out and get this fucking show going. And the Bucks, too, and a lot of people, I'm not saying it was all Cody. But Cody was like, okay, Meltzer, I'll take that bet. And Meltzer, you're looking like a fucking idiot. Um, but anyway, 
Pharaoh was even there. Pharaoh, one, the, the real big dog of wrestling. Pharaoh's awesome. No, no, seriously, the Huskies are awesome. I think Siberian Husky. But anyway, DDP, Glacier, Dreamer, accompanied Cody. I think there were a couple others that accompanied him. I didn't quite catch him. <clears throat> Glacier, that was kind of cool, though. Um, Jared, Tim Storm, and others. I believe Sean Devari also uh, accompanied Aldis to the ring. Nick Aldis. And that was in that was cool. It really gave a big fight feel. My God, this 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 match. It was very old school NWA. The crowd absolutely fucking wanted Cody to win. I mean, and the, this is where I'm gonna try not to get emotional. This is where the review might go long. So apologies. I will try to keep this under 30 minutes if I can. But my God, this this match. It's like Aldis and Cody. Started slow, doing some good exchanges and everything, some chops, some good wear down moves, very old school NWA. Um, and then at one point, Cody goes for a big move off the ropes. Aldis catches him with a forearm. Really good, really good shit. Really good, you know, just catches him with a forearm. And Cody, of course, ends up blading. Um, either blade, I mean, I don't think he was caught hard way. I mean, if he was, it wouldn't matter to me. The whole point is, is Cody is bleeding. Uh, making him the victor, shout out to the Derb. But DDP comes down and is checking on him. DDP, who is 62 years old and can still move around the ring pretty damn well, DDP yoga apparently is amazing. I haven't tried it, but I, I wouldn't know. <coughs> Some people I know swear by it. But that whole thing, they play up, DD, they play up uh, you know, Cody's cut and everything. They have kind of this prolonged stoppage, like where it's a referee going to stop it. And Earl Hefner was a referee. Um, Earl, I think this might be his last match. Apparently he did stuff for a stroke at some point. Um, honestly, the man, the man's one of the most famous referees for better or famous, infamous, depending on, uh, you know, your taste. He's refereed for so many goddamn years. I mean, he doesn't really need to ref anymore. Hopefully he can enjoy his retirement and everything. If this is indeed his last match. Um, at least it didn't end like the 2006 Slammiversary match where he, you know, refereed an NWA title match. Um, then again, King of the Mountain was, uh, messy. But anyway, crowd was on fire though. Cody, they wanted Cody to win. And I was like, don't you dare stop this match. I thought we were going to get a Starcade 84 finish where like Dusty was, you know, bleeding like crazy and was going, and it was going to get stopped. And that kind of stuff. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, that's going to be a bit of a downer, but it would make sense because then maybe you could push this for another match later. But wait, go all in and just absolutely go insane. Um, run in, Sean Devari ran in. <coughs> um, you know, Arya Devari's older brother, Sean Devari, former uh, spokesperson for Mark Henry, the great Kali, and Muhammad Hassan. Do you remember? Um, DDP hits a diamond cutter on Sean Devari, just bang, just out of nowhere. Just, it was great stuff. He, diamond cutter, Barrett in the RKO, fight me. Um, but Cody, you know, Cody was still down and bleeding. Very old school booking though, where Aldous was focusing on the cut. And <clears throat> figure four is broken up by Cody. Some just great wear down moves. I mean, just really, really good stuff. Aldous went for a big elbow. And Brandy got, you know, Brandy got on top of Cody, not in that way, that's not a euphemism, and took that bump. And I mean, credit to her. I mean, that was, all this did not let up. I mean, just boom. And oh God, you're thinking, okay, Brandy is down. She's not going to be able to support Cody. Because <clears throat> there was even a moment before that where Brandy's saying to Cody, we don't, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this. It, it's not worth your life. Um, stuff like that. It was really emotional. And then just like this, this roll up, this like just roll up, like the Cody of Major. I mean, Cody hit like, you know, crossroads at one point and one, two, couldn't hit. But after that elbow bump, you know, that elbow drop that Brandy took, you know, the brunt of, Cody manages to get the roll up in one, two, three. And the, I, I swear the roof flew off the place. It flew off the place like in a Louis Tunes cartoon and came back down on there. It was great seeing Cody hold the same title that his father held. That was amazing. I, I don't know what else to say. It was absolutely fucking amazing. <clears throat> um, it was just, it, it was mind blowing. I mean, I was crying during the pay-per-view. I mean, I'm going to try not to cry now, but it was great stuff because you could tell how much it meant to Cody to all the emotions of working hard to get this show off the ground to make it happen and all the tickets selling out so quick. 
and doing all this shit. I, you have to think he's like, I can't believe it. We're here and I'm holding and I now won the same title that my dad held. You know, it's what Cody's thinking. I mean, obviously my dad was never NWA champion, but Cody's thinking <clears throat> my father won this title in 86 for the last time. Now here I am winning it. And that's just great stuff. Honest to God, that's great stuff. I, I just, there's no other, there's no other fucking way to say it. No other fucking way to say it. It was amazing. I mean, I think actually Dusty's first title win came like 39 years before, but because it's actually only 32 years, but still, he may, he won the NWA title. Cody won the NWA title, and you could just tell how much it meant to him. And it was great. And the crowd exploded. I'm amazed the show did not end on that. I quite frankly think the crowd or the show should have ended on that. Because <clears throat> it was just such great stuff. It really was. Um, and now, but, and then this, this, the next couple matches were good. They weren't great. And I just want to say that right off the bat, so I'm going to be quick about these. But Joey Janela versus Hangman Page in the Chicago Street Fight. I had heard the name Joey Janela. I had never seen him in a match before. I enjoy his work. I don't, I don't really, there are some people who say, well, I don't think he's all that good. I enjoyed his work. He's pretty good. Pretty good. I mean, I need to see more of him before I think he's great. But um, the girl that accompanied him, Penelope Ford, damn. I mean, and credit to her, she took some uh, big bumps in this. Apparently, she's also a good wrestler. I'll have to check that out. Um, an actual Cracker Barrel was used. An actual barrel with Cracker Barrel on, on the side. That was that was pretty funny. Never been to a Cracker Barrel. I don't think there are any around in my area, or in, at least in a couple state area. Um, ladder spot where Hangman Page hit a burning hammer. <clears throat> um, Ford attacking Page, hitting a big dive outside. Um, there was this one table spot where they had the stage area. It was like the stage area, and then you went to steps to step down, and they set two tables up on the floor. So, like, right below the steps. So you could only go to the, like, just before the top of the step before you hit through somebody in a power bomb because otherwise you would go tumbling down, and that would be bad. We would not want people to break their ankles or their necks. Like Joey Janela must have almost broken his neck here on this because... They're on the stage, and Paige manages to get him up in a power bomb and throws him. <clears throat> and he almost gets the table, and he kind of doesn't quite. And ouch. And I'm not blaming either guy there. I don't know if I would have taken that bump necessarily. I wouldn't because I'm insane. I'm a weakling. But credit to both guys for taking some hard bumps there. Like, really, it was some good stuff. And there was a lot of storytelling here where you would have had to watch a lot of the YouTube stuff, the Being the Elite, where... Adam, it were Hangman Page had K Fabe murdered Joey Ryan because of like some dick spot stuff. And Page was haunted by his boots, so he couldn't wear shoes anymore. <clears throat> and he was also haunted by the memory of uh, beating up and bludgeoning and murdering Joey Ryan. And so he was like, you know, he couldn't sleep. He was haunted by these visions and everything. And he beat, he, you know, beat him and murdered him with a hotel phone. It was really weird. It was very odd. I, I'm not the biggest Joey Ryan fan as far as what he does in the ring, but I have nothing against the man himself. The man himself actually seems like a very stand-up guy. And that's really good. Again, I mean, you know, Joey Ryan's antics are not for me, but credit to him for making the most of his career out of something that I, that I don't know, that a lot of people wouldn't necessarily consider wrestling. But good for him. Seriously, good for him. <clears throat> Um, that bad table spot, though, that was insane. The curse boots and the phone made their appearance in a couple bags. And there was this ladder set up with this table, and it was a rite of passage. And Joey Janela took a rite of passage, which, if you don't know, was Hangman Page taking somebody's legs and hanging them here and then, you know, dro and then dropping down. So their neck hits. It's like, you know, it's variation of a pile driver, um, sort of. But the idea is, is like, okay, you're doing that, but you can sort of protect because you're laying on your knees. Well, they did the spot where they did it off a ladder through a table. Credit to Janela and Paige for doing that and not dying, especially Janela. <clears throat> but good stuff. Um, Penelope Ford looked good in this match. I mean, and I don't mean just looks wise. I mean, she did well. She did well trying to help, um, help, help out Joey Janela. That was very impressive. I was I was very impressed by that. That was very enjoyable. 
Um, and then, and forgive me, I think my camera was going a little bit wonky there. But then the idea was like, okay, what's going to happen? Well, Joey Ryan appears. A bunch of guys are dressed up like dicks, like big old ghost penises. And Joey Ryan appears and starts, you know, attacking comes down and does his usual antics, his baby oil and that kind of stuff, or Vaseline, I think it's baby oil, and, like, you know, scaring Paige. Paige is, like, selling it like crazy. And Joey Ryan does a dick spot where Paige does a flip over, and Joey Ryan has a lollipop that he just sticks in his trout, sticks in his trunks, and it sticks in Paige's mouth. And that's the kind of shit I just don't like. But, again, I, I'm going to try not to be negative on this. Credit to, jo credit to Joey Ryan for making the most out of a gimmick that most people wouldn't have been able to do anything with. Um, the cra <laughs> Adam, so Hangman Page gets pushed out. He's like knocked out. He gets pushed out. And the, the guys dressed up like the penises are taking him away. And the crowd starts chanting, rest in penis. Chicago, I fucking love you. I mean, even if it wasn't everybody from Chicago, seriously. Okay, you, you goddamn bunch of crazy fans. That, that, that was great. Rest in penis, hashtag rest in penis. That was, that was good stuff. I'm not going to put that in the description though, because I don't want to get banned, but <clears throat> that was good stuff. And then we had the Ring of Honor title match next. We had Flip and versus Jay Lethal. And you have some backstage stuff where somebody was handing, um, somebody, you know, off camera hands, uh, Jay Lethal, the black machismo, the macho man, Randy, Randy Savage, uh, sunglasses, you know, because Jay Lethal did a great Macho Man impression when he was in, uh, TNA Impact Wrestling. Really, it was great stuff. And his Ric Flair impression, spot on. But he, like, this person, you know, he's looking at the stuff and this guy slaps him on the shoulder. And suddenly that snaps him into being Black Machismo. Turns out to be Lanny Poffo, brother of Randy Savage. <coughs> and Brandy was at Flip's side. Uh, dressed like a pinup sergeant or something like that. So cue the fanfic. Um, and it was good chemistry. They, they really had some good stuff because, um, Lethal was in the Black Machismo, uh, shtick. What he was doing was he was kept trying to go after Brandy thinking it was, it, she was his Liz. That, that was pretty funny. This, this was a lot of comedy at first. Flip had already wrestled. And I mean, even though he had like just taken a few bumps and stuff like that, it was like the idea, let's make this kind of comedy. But people did want Flip to win. I thought Flip was going to win, actually. I was like, holy shit, he's actually going to do it. He's going to get, he's going to find his way into all in. He's going to win the Ring of Honor championship. <clears throat> he didn't do that, but Lethal was in and out of the madness because then at one point, um, Brandy slaps him on the shoulder. I believe this shoulder. And that snaps him out of it, and he's all confused, and he doesn't understand what's going on. I mean, he still knows how to wrestle, obviously, but he's, like, wondering what the hell's with the garb, why Lanny Popo was there. Um, and at one point, Lethal, I think, hits, like, three elbow drops. There was some really good wrestling in this. I would encourage you guys to check this out because it's hard to describe a lot of this stuff. Lethal hits three elbow drops, one, two. Flip kicks out, starts channeling Hulk Hogan because, of course, you had to have a white guy channeling somebody that hates black people, you know, hates black people. I had to say it. Sorry. I mean, if any of you Hulk Hogan fans are here, but <clears throat> I had to say it. And I apologize for my voice giving out, but I was yelling a lot during this show. It was a damn good show. Um, Lethal ends up hitting a lethal injection in Chicago. Cue the jokes. And one, two, three. So, Lethal gets victory, show respect, and then Bully Ray runs down there and starts attacking both guys, sets up a table. Colt Cabana runs down there, huge pop. No CM Punk, by the way, and that's a good thing. I really didn't want CM Punk to appear there. And no Pac, no Neville, um, which probably is for the best, because no compete clause or not. Maybe it was just because it was too low of a show. But Bully ends up going through a table. Colt Cabana ends up putting him through a table, and there we go. That's uh, saying the crowd home happy. And then we have Omega versus Pentagon Jr. The good stuff, a lot of big chops. Um, these are going to be some quick reviews here, but big chops, good exchanges. Um, they really, they they really were over. Both men were super, super over, like fantastically over. It was really well done, like damn, damn good. Um, the hard apron spot where. Just Fear Factor, I believe, is what the movie is called. I mean, I'm familiar with some of Pentagon's work, but not a bunch. I've seen some of the stuff in um, Lucha Underground. Like I saw, his, I saw up to his, up to and just a little past the time where he was feuding with Vampiro. That was a brutal match. Um, 
<laughs> and I know he's done some great things in Impact. He was former Impact World Champion for like a month. That was a bad idea to not give it to him longer. Moving on. They did some really, really good stuff. Great dives by both. Um, just, you know, Ciro Mito. Um, I believe that's how you say it. I don't speak Spanish, but you had Pentagon, you know, showing zero fear. No matter how many V triggers he got, no matter how many moves he got, Omega. Omega and Pentagon faced up before, I believe, at Battle Los Angeles. Battle of Los Angeles, a, not Battle Los Angeles, it's a terrible movie. Battle of Los Angeles uh, earlier. Like, I think like a year before. Or almost a year before. But anyway, this was a very, very fun match. I, it, it was hard to come down or, you know, to get myself back up after the Cody, the, the Cody, uh, all this match because of all the emotion. And don't get me wrong, the, the card, the wrestlers did the best they could with it. But there was some good stuff. The uh, Pentagon did the arm pop, you know, where he, you know, snaps the arm and everything. But one wing angel by Kenny Omega and one, two, three. Very good stuff. Enjoyable. Kenny Omega gets the victory. Pentagon didn't look weak. And then we move on to Marty Skrull versus Okada. And this was good. The, co the crowd loved both. This was just really damn good wrestling. Okada can work with just any. I don't think Okada can have a bad match. I really don't think he can. If you give him 20 minutes, 20, 15, 20 minutes, he really can't have a bad match. I mean, it's hard for that to happen with, um, with a lot of people. But anyway, great exchanges. Skrull really is such a supremely talented guy. Really supremely talented. Whether he works in junior heavyweights or heavyweights, the guy's just damn good. Um, Okada, of course, at one point is going for the Rainmaker and does the 205, you know, Making fun of the 205 Live thing, which, good job on Okada for doing that. That was pretty funny. There were a lot of close near falls. I actually thought Skrull was going to get the victory. I actually thought it was, a, ooh, he got almost got the pinfall, almost got the chicken wing, and then no. And then two Rainmakers later, <clears throat> you know, Discus Rainmaker and Rainmaker for the victory. And there we go. Okada got the, Okada got the win. And it was enjoyable. The crowd really fucking loved it. I can't state enough how hot this crowd was the whole night. And then the main event, and this one was really quick. Like, again, you probably could have put this middle of the card, and you probably could have just put Cody versus Aldis in the main event. But this mat, this show went, with the pre-show, went about five hours. So the, the pay-per-view feed went almost four hours. Anyway, Ray Phoenix, Ray and Phoenix, and not Ray Phoenix, but Ray Mysterio, Phoenix, and Bandito versus the Golden Elite, Kota Ibushi, and the Young Bucks. Um, cue the uh, jokes about Kota Ibushi now make, you know, getting lost getting to the arena. Good thing, good thing Kenny Omega found him. I mean, there's Ibushi and Omega, they got, they got such great chemistry, honestly. Uh, great, great thing going on in wrestling. Rain Wolverine gear, there was a lot, a lot of good stuff. The crowd loved the whole thing. Uh, great dives, great flips. They're really what, the pace did not fucking slow down at all. I think it was maybe a 10 minute match, maybe an 11 minute match, but it was enjoyable. A lot of dives, a lot of good shit. Thought Ray's team was actually going to get the victory, but I'm like, there's no way the Bucks are there, there's no way the Bucks are losing. I was like, if Cody lost, it was what it was. I'm glad he didn't. But the Bucks losing, no way that was going to happen. Meltzer driver because Meltzer and his stupidity made this thing all possible. Where Cody was like, okay, I'm going to stick it to you, Meltzer, and he did. <clears throat> and so did the Bucks. So did a lot of people. I mean, I think it was all in good fun too, but. Really good show. I mean, really good show. Golden Leak gets a victory, and then the pay per view cuts out automatically. So I'm gonna give this an I'm gonna give this an A, even with the stuff I didn't enjoy. Really, really good stuff. I really enjoyed this show. So I want to know what you guys thought of the show. Let me know in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Also, this has been Real Honesty with John Ritland. I'm and I can't wait for all in two. I will see you soon.